Hey there, this is Rebecca. Today we're going to take a look at the heating curve. If you aren't already familiar with the three states of matter and that solid, liquid, and gas, you don't know the difference between the motion, the attractive forces, the density, or the volume between these three, or if you just haven't had any opportunity to understand what the phase diagram is, I would highly recommend for you to click on the links above. I have made videos for these two concepts. Um, take a look at these two concepts before uh, looking at the heating curve. The heating curve combines everything that I've just mentioned into a visual representation where it's on a graph. And so, of course, as scientists, we love looking at graphs. So this graphical representation will be on a basis of looking at the different states, these three states, and how temperature plays a role in these three states. The heating curve is a visual representation where the y-axis is temperature and the x-axis is time. Temperature is in degrees Celsius here and time is in seconds. Today we're going to take a look at the heating curve of water. So that's the example that we've been using consistently throughout. So um, the three states of matter, we're now going to put this water example onto a graph. This first piece, this first linear, positively linear, piece that goes from around a little bit under uh, 40 degrees, negative 40 degrees Celsius to zero, that entire line right there is the solid state. So that's the solid state. That's the state where, you know, ice is still able to freeze. The next piece is the liquid state. The liquid state is going from zero degrees to 100 degrees, and that's the water form. The next state is the gaseous state, and that's steam as an example. So like when we're boiling water, um, when it goes above 100 degrees Celsius, that steam is going to be formed in the gaseous state. Now, you must be wondering, okay, so there are these three states, and they're visually represented now. Um, what are these horizontal lines? So these horizontal lines that are combining solid and liquid and liquid and gas are transition states. The first transition state is a solid and liquid state. So that's the transition state between going from ice to water or water to ice. Um, in a heating curve, because as you can see, the lines keep going upwards, right? So essentially, the assumption here is as you are heating this ice, this ice turns from a solid form to a liquid form into water. And then if you heat it above 100 degrees, then that ice is going to completely go into a gaseous state. So this heating curve that's going upwards um, tells you as temperature increases, the states of matter also transitions in this form. We can also consider the phase diagram in this sense where you know, for going from a solid to a liquid state is melting, right? And going from a liquid to a gaseous state is evaporation. So this heating curve is able to combine everything that you've just learned into a visual representation. The second plateau is the water and steam plateau, and that's the liquid state and the gaseous state, that transition state in between. So before a liquid water can fully become a gas, um, it needs to hit the right temperature. So if it's only at 50 degrees Celsius, then the water is not going to turn into steam. So once it does hit that piece, there's gonna be a little slight transition state before it goes upwards to turn into a different state of matter. If you've liked this concept um, and enjoyed the video, please like or subscribe. Thank you.